Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are going to be returning to Suzerain Rizia, the new DLC for Suzerain. We are late into the game as King Romus of, C of uh, Rizia. We are in the midst of a war with the Grand Duchy of Pals. The first phase of the war went very poorly. We lost one of our key border forts, and we accomplished very little. We did inflict relatively heavy casualties on the enemy, but they have so many more units than us that it feels like we're just barely holding on by the skin of our teeth. Uh, and we stole the uh, stocks of uh, Lespia uh, with, with Vagsland uh, to support our neighbor at uh, Morelia. But that's where we find ourselves in right now. It is turn turn is this six of the game and uh things are gonna not, not going well uh what does this say fort ale's naval base expansion has been completed but we lost the fort in the war so i don't i don't know if that matters we did the air base expansion and uh we are about to go to oh funding the resistance in zil i don't have any money to fund the resistance oh goodness let's actually undo this We're just going to reload this because I hate when you go into a decision and then it's like, oh, you can't do anything else. I want to go back in just where we picked off. We haven't done anything yet and just see if there's anything I can sell to maybe give us more money for the res resistance and Zill because we really do need to try and get Zill back. I, I have a hunch at this point we are at the point where things are going so badly that we are going to be cooed by someone or just thrown out by the populace. Let's see if we can use our authority to do anything with the, uh... Can we, we can raise... We can probably pass a war tax, right? Regular this thing imposed 50% tax on the previous year's profits. This is gonna piss off a lot of people, but it will give me budget. So pass the war tax. Um, so what is that? Does that money let me do anything here now? Okay, increase funding to the Arena Torres Association. I'm not going to fund Su Omani to see if we can win, the, like, win Zill to our side. Maybe if we get Zill back, even if we lose the war against Pales, it'll, it'll result in something more positive. Come on, I'm not going to send... I already sent you a division. I can't send you more troops to support your civil war. I'm sorry. As much as I would like to send you more reserves to bolster our monarchy, I can't. We're about to meet you with Grand of Eisman Asmal. Additional supplies are su sent to Zill. I don't know if we can get the Dardians to support us. I think we're actually meeting to try and convince Morelia to uh, help us. So we can remove the war tax and then it's negative one per turn? That's funny. So I get the money and then I can immediately remove the war tax? That one gold doesn't let me do anything, right? We could allow free press, but that seems like a bad idea in the midst of a in the midst of a war. It'll at least make the left wing folks happier with me, I suppose. 
temporarily. Naturalization process for foreigners. All right, let's just save the cash and see what the meeting's going to yield. Meeting with Grand Viseman Asmal. We haven't been overly supportive to any religions, though, so I can't imagine he's going to be super gung-ho on helping us. Standing on a remote mountain plateau outside of Nail, the Silver Garrison was the headquarters of the Dardian government as well as the dw dwelling place of its leader, Supreme Viseman Yorga Asmal. For our meeting today, Asmal had granted me the rare permission to enter his inner sanctum. After a lengthy drive up steep, curving roads, our motorcade parked just outside the garrison's gates. Titus and I met Sal as we exited our respective vehicles. I confess that I did not know what to expect, Your Majesty. I've studied Golcondist compounds like these ex excessively, but I've never been allowed inside. Forget the communities I want. I don't need weaponry. I need soldiers. The issue isn't having too few weapons. The issue is having too few soldiers. <sighs> Rizia considers the religion blasphemous. We can't expect a warm welcome. Even if we tolerated Golcondas, I suspect the Dardians would not even be satisfied. So if we, I suppose if we had removed the Golcondas blasphemy laws, maybe this meeting would have gone better. I probably should have done that. Okay. They're seekers, your majesty. It is said that through their physical labor, they will gain the mental clarity they need to begin their pursuit of Golconda. They do all the dirty work while the true believers lounge around doing nothing. And the fact that there are no men among them is a coincidence? Okay. I don't know. None of these are terribly good options. Granted, we're not meeting with their person yet. We're just talking to our religious leader. As the guards led us closer to the pillar, the sound of the men's voices could be heard. Short, sharp shouts emitted in perfect unison. The disciples. They practice purification of the spirit through strict martial arts regiments. I know a few Palaisians whose spirit they could purify. Dardius feigned mercenaries are indeed disciples. If undertaken in the service of a cause they align with, their work counts as progress towards their spiritual ascendance. We emerged into the center of the garrison in front of the pillar with it was a training ground the size of a football field, flanked on either side by white marble temples. On it, some four dozen men were engaged in combat drills. Titus watched in open admiration as they executed a complex choreography of strikes, blocks, and counterattacks, each punctuated by a forceful cry. A gong chimed in the distance. You know, that's one of the things I always feel about, like, very regimented militaries. You'll see videos that, like, look impressive, and they're like, these people know how to fight. And it's like, yeah, they know how to fight choreographed fights. That's generally not actually reflective of how well they're going to fight in combat. But anyway. Yorga Osmal dressed in the same robes I'd seen him wear at the Alliance of Nations and stepped out of, from their midst. Welcome to the Silver Garrison, Your Majesty. I'm humbled to be here, Mr. Osmal. You should be, Your Majesty. So, Grand Viseman, or Grand Viseman, we finally meet. I've been looking forward to it, Supreme Viseman. Shall I lead us in a Vorkist prayer ceremony? For this special occasion, I had something different in mind. A traditional Dardian duel of generosity. Sal's face turned white. It's a duel of generosity, I'm assuming, is not actually fighting, but I guess we'll see. It'd be a great privilege to participate in your holy tradition. You're familiar with our custom? Even better. No weapons, no bloodshed, each leader represented by a champion of his choosing. He spread his arms wide. Talam Isthar Zark Nalin. The circle of men flattened out into a long line. Asmal slowly walked from one end to the other, then back to the middle. He stood in front of a particularly tall, well-built disciple and bowed, 
The man took a step forward and returned the gesture. I will be represented by Lauren. His participation in this duel shall be his final challenge before he is his ascension to the rank of adept. The rest of the disciples applauded. Sal politely followed suit. Asmal turned toward Titus. My bodyguard tensed up instinctively. Captain Gordian, I've heard tales of your fighting prowess, both before and after you be began serving the king. Am I right to assume that you have brought this man as your champion, your majesty? Um, nope, I'll serve as my own champion. Let's go! A brave proposition. Your majesty, this man looks like trouble, even for me. I have to respect my hosts, right? What could be more respectful than stepping into the ring myself? If you insist, sir, I will be standing at the ready in case you need help. This is highly unorthodox, your majesty. But of course, so is most of Golcondism. I'm just banking on the fact that it's a duel of generosity, right? So I'm hoping I don't actually get my shit beat in? Also, didn't he say no bloodshed? I assume this is some sort of trap, or it's like... <sighs> anyway. Dardia definitely gives me sort of post-revolution Iran vibes. I feel like Rizia is pre-revolution Iran, at least in some ways. Asmal cleared his throat. We and the disciples stopped speaking. As his majesty has declared, so it will be. The king of Rizia will duel against my champion. Each fighter will now have five minutes to prepare. Lauren noted his assent and walked away. He knelt on a patch of grass and raised his arms skyward in prayer, his face a mask of concentration. Does the Lord have any tips for me, Grand Weissman? Sal shook his head. You know, Moon, Riz I don't know that Rizia is supposed to be any one country. People said that Sorland was Turkey in the original game as well, and the developers multiple si times said no, basically. The developers said... Swordland is a amalgamation of multiple different developing nations, and it's not any one particular country. I am assuming Rizia is kind of the same. Um, they did make reference in the the sort of initial description of the Kingdom of Rizia of being somewhat progressive on women's rights, as well as um, maybe more forward in some ways than than other monarchies, and and that history as well as sort of the center point in conflict between empires, really strikes me more as, like, Persia than it does, you know, um, than it does Turkey. But that's that's just my two cents. God has nothing to do with what's happening here. A short while later, another gong sounded. The disciples formed a tight circle around me and the man Yorga Asmal had called Lorian. The Supreme Wiseman stepped between us. The duel will last ten minutes, or until one opponent acknowledges the other's superior- Oh, it is combat, great. Should a fighter draw blood, the duel will be called off immediately. Its, re its results void before the Lord. You will bow to one another and the duel will commence. He stepped back into the circle. He and the disciples began a slow, deep-voiced chant in Dardian, as Lorian and I bowed to each other. The moment we began sparring, it was obvious I was outmatched. Lauren moved with a fluid unpredictability. His blows seemed to come out of nowhere, but landed with tactical precision. The hand-to-hand -hand combat training I'd received in the military was useless against his technique. Yet somehow, miraculously, I was holding my own against the Dardian fighter. Uh... Okay... How do I know which direction to go?! A roundhouse kick feels like you're just exposing yourself. A hook? Uh, I feel like a jab exposes me the least, so we'll try that. I threw a jab with my left hand. It hit his shoulder and he staggered backward slightly with a smile. Say nothing and keep fighting. I don't want to ebb him on. He's obviously more skilled than me. He's probably just toying with me. We continued sparring, Lauren mostly dodging my blows with ease, but occasionally allowing one or two to land. He's being polite. I'm not going to try and get my ass kicked. Ten minutes were almost up. My opponent turned his back briefly to prepare for his next move. 
Fuck your god and hit me! <laughs> uh, no? If I bleed, you win? I guess I... I thought it was just it was called off. Okay. I don't want to offend everybody else around him, though. So we'll do hit him while he's off guard. He took it on the ribcage with a grimace and allowed himself to collapse to the ground, holding up both hands in a sign of concession. The Lord has blessed us with a beautiful fight. Very well done, your majesty. Lauren, you may not have won, but you are still my champion. You'll make a fine adept. He took the disciple's hand and kissed him tenderly on the lips. Awkward. The surrounding crowd erupted into cheers. Titus looked around uneasily. Is that normal here? Unfortunately, Captain Gordian, it is. Sal grimaced. Sir Verkic would despair at what they have done to his sacred teachings. It is my. We know my butler's gay, so I'm not going to uh, besmirch that. Plus, we're not going to openly say something offensive to people we need help from. Okay, Sal, if you can't control yourself, get the hell back in the limo and go back to the plane. An auspicious start to our meeting. This way, please. Titus stood outside as Sal and I followed the Supreme Viseman through a door at the base of the pillar. A staircase led down to a softly lit room. Its walls lined the floors to ceiling with bookshelves. There were no tables or chairs, just a number of comfortable-looking cushions on the carpeted floor. Asmal gestured for us to sit. This is the very heart of the garrison, Your Majesty. I never make a political decision without consulting the teachings of Saint Verk. I would not presume to have your religious wisdom, but I do often seek the advice of Grand Viseman Ignacus. Sal nodded solemnly. We in Rizia find that the dual burden of spiritual and political leadership is too great for one soul to shoulder alone. I'm afraid your Grand Viseman has been giving you flawed advice. I don't know how else he could explain the treatment of Golcondist in your country. Um... I don't want to be, like, overly patsy to him, but I also don't want to directly insult him. So I guess we'll go with two. Our blasphemy laws were passed to protect Rizian Verkist's right to observe in peace. I will not apologize for putting my country people's rights before yours. Verkic and his disciples traveled these lands long before our borders existed, your majesty. A worshipper's place of birth should not prohibit him from following the divine path. You would not have come here today if you did not want something from me. But first we must discuss your so-called blasphemy law. The arch sanctuaries of Plavo, Bonovo, and Jails are three of the most sacred sites in the Verkist religion. It is not fair that my people are denied access to them. When you were allowed to enter them, you crowded out the real Verkus to the point of damaging one of our precious sanctuaries. If you wish to limit the flow of visitors to your arch sanctuaries, we will not oppose that, but I suspect your law has, not, has never been about only overcrowding. It is no secret that the majority of Verkism leaders regard Golcondalism as a taint on our religion. A taint? Golcondalism has millions of practitioners, all of whom would testify that we are following the one true path St. Verk laid out for us. Doesn't enlightenment through violence directly contradict Verkut's teachings? Not violence, as Verk wrote. One must hone the discipline of the body as well as the spirit to guard and guide the virtues bestowed by the divine. Yet in that quiet whisper of peace, truth and righteousness take root and flourish.
Don't you see? You're both right. <laughs> we do not have to agree to each other to practice diplomacy. Supreme Viseman, can we not get around this? This is what Dardians want, Your Majesty. I would be a bad leader if I did not strive to provide for them. My people have mined your gold, built your weapons, extracted your gas, yet they are barred from the religion's holiest pool of places. Can I just pass the... I'll gladly pass the... Remove the... The, the laws... It's not the Dardy and laborers we are worried about, it is holy pilgrims. Laborers and pilgrims alike pray to the same God, your majesty. You cannot judge Dardians only by the value they provide your kingdom. I know the strife Rizia is facing. If you would see reason and lift this unjust ban, there is much we in Dardia can do to help you. Can you ensure that your people will respect our holy buildings? They belong to all Vercus, after all. I cannot control what Dardians do in your country, but I will help you pr preserve order at the three arch sanctuaries to the extent that I am able. You tread a dangerous path, your majesty. I do not know whether Rizia can tolerate an influx of Golcondists, especially during wartime. Desperate to win the war. We must respect our fellow Verkus beliefs. I unfortunately have no choice, Mr. Osmal. I will not fire our blasphemy laws in exchange for your country's aid. Thank you, Your Majesty. I'll give the order to our archbishops. Your people can expect entrance to Plavo, Benevo, and jails within a week. I will not forget this act of compassion, Grand Weisman. My people thank you. Now, Your Majesty, what is it you want? Uh, one or two? Two is what we need, right? For the war, anyway. We're at war, Supreme Viseman. I would humbly call upon your great warrior culture for assistance. We're happy to help our brethren. We are willing to sell you our latest missile system. Even the Lespasians will have trouble competing with it. Okay. Missiles sound good. <laughs> to safeguard God's creation, we must invoke the power of the heavens. Wrath can be a powerful tool in the hands of the righteous, Grand Viseman. We can also offer you our finest mercenaries. They have been helping win wars since the days of the Empire of Mordia. You saw my disciples earlier. Imagine a larger team, just as trained, wielding sophisticated weaponry and stealth technology. It's 1950, what's stealth technology? Can they be relied on to fight for the Rizian crown? They will fight for what they believe in, Your Majesty. For a fee, of course. I would happily avail myself of either of those services. Alas, my kingdom cannot afford it. 
That whole conversation was pointless because we don't have enough money to do it. Alright, well, help Morelia, please. Think of it from a financial perspective. Peace between Dirty and Morelia could be lucrative for all of us. Never seen a king admit to being as broke as fuck as this one? Well, it's true. Silly buddy, sadly. I'm happy to help. Can I just have... Huh. Can I just repass the blasphemy laws? At this point, what's the point? You didn't give me anything. You agreed to meet to one person. Kiss him? So this is good though, it's green, right? That's usually good. Might piss off some of my local folks, but... So I don't get the missiles or the soldiers? That sucks. Should've kept that money. Uncle Hugo? What's he want? Probably nothing good. Uh-oh. Ominous music. Am I about to get cooed? My uncle had invited me for a one-on-one -on -one talk, and though I had plenty on my mind, I could hardly decline. Titus remained on guard outside as I pushed open the door and stepped inside. I cast my eye over the fil uh, filigreed mahogany desk, the antique cabinets, and the tasteful paintings. A fire flickered in the fireplace. Two leather armchairs had been set out in front. One empty, the other occupied by Hugo. My uncle rose and bowed upon my approach. Of course, Your Grace, when my grand vizier, sum v v vizier vizar, summons me, I have no choice but to obey. Regardless, I know you have much business to attend to, so I appreciate you taking your time to come here. Tell me, Your Majesty, how much thought have you given to the future of House Taurus? This family means everything to me. You should know that by now. I should, and yet, our family's roots can be traced all the way back to the Risen Ed Empire. We have survived war, conquest, and numerous challenges to the throne to be where we are today. I brought you here to give you a warning. Certain members of our house have begun to speak ill of you. Certain members? Are you one of them? I myself would never say a word against you. Some of your decisions have adve admittedly vexed me. A significant group of aristocrats, real estate owners, have denounced your tenant protection laws. I had no idea this angered our house that much. Thank you for telling me. I wouldn't be a very effective advisor if I didn't tell you. If our house does not support you within Rizia, they will not support you on the battlefield. And well, I am loath to remind you, but there are those in House Torres who believe my brother, and hence you, should have been removed from the royal line of succession after introducing commoner blood. 
Your actions as king have unfortunately poured fuel on those flames. What exactly are you implying? Are you calling my legitimacy as king into question? Of course I respect your legitimacy, your majesty. I'm simply repeating the claims of others. I've not even mentioned our house's gravest concern, Mana Saison. I am certain you had good intentions in allowing Saison heir to court Vina. But I will tell you this, if you permit Her Highness to marry this man, your grip on the throne will weaken to the point where I cannot recover it. give up his name if he marries her. Their children will still be Torres's. At the expense of Rizian tradition? You needn't allow your reign to be undone by a pair of starry-eyed youths. There are actions that can be taken. Such as ordering him to fight in pails? We'll be like King David, or whatever. A most elegant solution. I doubt he's much of a fighter, but his charisma would work wonders on the Brenna's troops. If he comes back a war hero? By then, ideally the princess will have been claimed by another suitor. I'll hazard a guess. You think the lucky groom should be Rico? There's a reason my son is not yet married, yes. A royal union between two Tauruses will secure the future of our house beyond a shadow of a doubt. It'll also produce a child with hooves? Will it get House Torres back on my side after everything I did? They'll forgive any number of transgressions if they know a Torres heir is forthcoming. I do not want to worry you, but at this point, pairing Vina and Rico may be the only way to prevent key members of our house from switching allegiances. Short of producing a male heir yourself, I should stop harping on about this. The war deserves your full attention. You're my Grand Vizar, and my uncle. Your advice is always valuable to me. I'm not gonna marry my daughter to Rico, that fucker. What can Titus do for me? My uncle might coo me. Manus's party might coo me. What is Titus? What can I do with Titus? Nope. I don't want to kill Manus. You have no idea. I'm not going to kill Manus. Thank you, Titus, you're dismissed. What can I do with Manus?
I don't like any of these options. He'll only become a war hero if we win. We're not going to win. So he'll probably die at the front if we send him. I wish there was an option where it'd be like, we need for the for you guys to take this over as a constitutional monarchy. Because I feel like I'm on my way out. And I'd rather make sure my daughter doesn't get wrapped up in this. I'm not sending him to the front. Nope. We'll just allow ourselves to get cooed. And you never do anything to cut that short, right? Guess get cooed and restart. <sighs> well, Lucidia is in charge of the police. We didn't give Rico control. So maybe she can help us out of the coup. I'd rather have Rico killed. I should have agreed to Smolik's request. but I don't even have money for that. Pardon Duchess Saison? Lucidia is my Lady Macbeth for damn sure. Why can't we send Rico to the front? Damn right. Sure. I'm gonna if I'm gonna piss off my locals, might as well piss them all off. Maybe I can win the support of folks who aren't my uh, aren't my blood. Traitor pardoned. <laughs> well, that's not gonna be a terribly popular. Invasion of Pales Phase Two. I assumed we would have gotten a new turn, but apparently not. Uh, this isn't good. I didn't even get a chance to redeploy or do anything? What's going on? Also, I don't understand why these enemy troops in the rear are able to draw supplies. Supplies from where? Shouldn't they all be out of supply and struggling? Where is their capital anyway? Is it Marquez? Or no? That's Remez over here. That's, this is phase one. There isn't even a... <sighs> okay. Um, these are bad guys, right? So this war is not going well. At least these guys are going to be overrun. Alright, we destroyed that bad guy. Who's the attacking unit here? Maybe we just let all the guys in the north die and try and win in the south?
they'll win that fight. Where are they fighting here? This guy? already lost ales in the north so whatever right like are both these units both these units can be overrun nice breakthrough in the south circling the city. Yeah, I mean, my my hope was I could cut their supply lines off in the south here, and, and that would do it, but I don't have any reserves or reinforcements coming. I don't have any marines left to land either, so cutting their naval supply doesn't seem to be terribly beneficial. Can you reinforce, like, units that are depleted, can they not be reformed? I guess we're out of turns. For a country of 4 million fighting a country of 40 million, yeah. Their military sure is, uh, on another level. Agreed entirely. fight in the south. No, well, there go all my units, or moves. So we'll win this fight here. They're gonna push me up against the edge of the map in the north. I think if we lose Terador, we lose... the war? Oh, I didn't want to... What the fuck? I didn't mean to click that. Alright. What's this? Why is this, like... Like, do these guys even have supply, and where are they drawing them from? Shouldn't they be out of supply?
with support. Cut my line there. We should win this fight coming up there. Oh, we can't win that fight there against that fort? Phase two is almost over for what it's worth. We're gonna get beaten up here in the north, but if the enemy wants to keep driving northeast toward Fort Ailes, you know, whatever. These guys, are, why is this, none of this helping? Mechanized unit there got depleted. That's not good. Running out of time here. Nice naval bombardment for the win here. I didn't mean to click that. Again, units getting shot up because I, because of this. There needs to be like a confirm move button in this because it is kind of silly that there isn't. I just defeated my mechanized unit there. Oh, supporting there does no good. Good to know. Damn it, I didn't mean to do that.
So we've had a good deal of success in the south. We've been completely rolled in the north. Alright everybody, that's going to do it for today's episode of Suzerain Rizia. We're in the midst of a war that is not going very well, but we're trying to hang on by the skin of our teeth and at least not lose disastrously. Uh, we'll see how that plays out in the next video. Until the next video, however, this is the Historical Gamer once again saying thank you very much for watching, and I'm out.